The prefix is an integer. What is an integer? It's a whole number. Right? I think in mathematics it says the whole is equal to the sum of its parts. Ooh, that's, that's, that's tough. Because its parts, meaning you got to belong to in order to be a part of. So if I got a pie and eight slices of bean pie, then I got a whole pie. But if I got six slices of bean and two slices of apple, I don't have a whole pie. Because the two parts that are apple don't belong with the six parts that are bean. So if the whole is equal to the sum of its parts, you got to belong to in order to be a part of. Question. Do you really belong? Well, that kind of integration you got. You now can sleep with white women and men. Right? They don't kill you as quick as they used to. So you feel we've arrived in heaven, right? So now we have a lot of mixed marriages or mixed sleep-ins and mixed babies. Right? But even in the mixture, white folks are losing. You can't shake that up and get a white person. So the black man has a weapon that he's using to make white folks extinct. And when white women look at that black man, strong and mighty like Samson, she done got the secret of your riddle, brother. And once the baby is born, she got to work now with a light-skinned baby with kinky hair. Damn, that's different. And you're doing fine. You're really doing okay, you know. But that's not the integration that Dr. King was talking about. Now let me tell you what real integration is. You ready? Here's a man and a woman, two different beings, maybe of the same race even, same ethnicity. When that sperm is emitted and it finds the egg and the first cell of life is created, the body wants to reject it because it's a foreign entity in your body. But the sperm now that has met the egg and become the first cell of life, the Quran said, it has to find a firm resting place. So now, the cell of life clings to the walls of the uterus and holds on against rejection. After a while, rejection stops 
acceptance comes and the new life is growing within the womb of a life that's been here and drawing from that life to build up its life. It's become a part of, but it's growing into something independent. That one day after development is going to breathe on its own. It's going to demand to come forth out of the womb. The umbilical cord has to be cut. And then the baby has to be washed and swaddled and salted and then grow into a new creature independent from, separated from the mother out of which it came. That's integration that produces separation. Now listen, listen, listen. Now look at the Chinese. Here they come to America. Well, in every major city where there are Chinese, they ain't trying to sleep with white people. The Chinese settle in a part of town. Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Because they like to be with each other. Okay, they come in. Then they end up buying where they live. They're separate. But they're integrated. They're in a system that they're making work for them. Can you dig it? Well, now look at them. Go to Chinatown. You go to a Chinese restaurant. It's Chinese people. What do you expect in Chinatown? They ain't integrating. You can't go in Chinatown looking for Egg Foo Young and a black person come out saying, Egg Foo Young, please. Wait, wait, wait. He would say, damn, what is he doing here? I thought he should be over on the other side of town selling ribs. I'm trying to give you a picture. In Chinatown, they got their own banks. Chinese people make money, they put money in their own bank. They lend money to their own people. They set up their own businesses in Chinatown. Integrated, but separate. In many large cities now you have Korea town, Greek town, Polish town. Oh hell. You say, well, yeah, them is white people and Asian people. Well, go on down to Miami. And look at the Haitians. They're your black brothers and sisters. They came to America a few years ago. They got their own part of town. They got their own politics. They got five banks. And you sitting around here talking about how big and bad you are. Don't have a damn bank. Don't have no money. You live in a separate part of town and don't own nothing in that part of town. You don't own the business. You don't own the block where you live. The white man come and set up banks. The black bank closed down. See, you're already separated, but you're not profiting. So Elijah Muhammad comes up with this plan. Now look, I'm going to say this. Now some of you might not understand, but 
I'm going to say it anyway. You know, we live in America. We have suffered here. This is our country. Wait, 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 wait now. Ours? Hell yeah. When you paid the price that we paid, when our work on the plantation made them rich, when we picked the cotton that gave them an agrarian economy based on our picking cotton, tobacco, and sugar cane, we made them bankers. We helped them set up Wall Street. We fueled the Industrial Revolution. We fought in all the wars. Well, hell then. This is ours. Did I say something wrong? Well, we need to claim what we built. Oh, I can hear white folks saying now, after Moses and Aaron began talking that land talk, they said, Moses and Aaron trying to turn us out of our land. Uh, you can't say our like it all belong to you. And you know what? We're sick and tired of seeing you ruin what is ours too. Uh-oh. Did I say something wrong? We can't let you do this. It's your damn stupid self. Go ahead. Excuse me. Now, why do I call him stupid? Yeah, why, Farrakhan? That ain't nice talk. But it's factual. (laughs) What makes them stupid? You see? The Native Americans owned this part. Didn't we? Didn't they? But what happened? Why did God let the white man take it from you? You gotta answer that question. Since God is the cause of all causes, why did He let that happen? See, there's a law of use. You can't have 3,000 by 2,000 square miles in Canada and South America and you living on the land, but you're not producing nothing from the land. So by the law of use, somebody came and took it from you. How many of you got children that you've lost to the authorities because of abuse? Even if it's a lie. When you abuse your children, the government steps in and does what? Under what law? The law of abuse. You abuse your child, you shouldn't have one. Well, Brother Lukma, we fight like this, you know. But listen. It don't poison the air, poison the land, poison the water, abusing the people. See, God watches this. So he says in the Bible, he takes the kingdom from whom he pleases and gives it to whom he pleases. The Quran says over and over again, I'll put you in their place, then see how you act.
If you came into power, would you treat white people the way they treated us? Or would you seek to treat people fairly with justice and equity? What kind of heart do you have? Are you a vengeful person now that when you get power, you do to others what they did to you? Or will you act in a godly fashion? See, this is why God looks on the heart of people. He's about to give you the kingdom. You have suffered for it. And now he's preparing you to handle it. Now look at this verse from the Bible. Man, this is heavy. What time is it? Look, uh, I won't even quote that scripture. I think it's better to go right to the end. You know, I, I think you, you just want to hear what we can do. Now, I asked Mr. Bob Johnson to come today, and uh, unfortunately something came up, and he wasn't able to make it. But I'm going to act as though Mr. Johnson was here. And I hope he'll get this message. Now, there's nobody in America, not too many, who have been as successful as Mr. Johnson. Would you agree? Yes, Mr. Johnson had a vision for BET. He and others put it together, and it was the voice of black America. And without Mr. Johnson and BET, we would not have been as successful with the Million Man March. Unfortunately, Mr. Johnson felt the need to move on and sold BET. And BET is not now what it once was. But Mr. Johnson became a billionaire and a, a stockholder in what he once owned. Mr. Johnson parlayed that money and bought the Charlotte Bobcats. He's a very brilliant man. Years ago we talked, he was going to buy U.S. Air lines and set up a shuttle flight for the East Coast. But it was contingent upon Congress allowing United Airlines to expand, then he would buy that part of it with United Airlines. It didn't happen. But the man is a billionaire. Does that make you happy? I didn't hear you. Were well, you happy for him? But how did you benefit? Not at all, right? How many black brothers in the NFL are multimillionaires? And look how strong they stood and they won against ownership. The NBA now, they want to play ball but they don't want to lose money doing it. So the same owners want to lock them out and the brothers are not caving, which is a good sign. But look, if you notice, all the brothers want to do something to give back, right? And they do. They put in a little park and a little community center and little small things and that makes them feel good but the enemy is watching and he's directing 
their dollars. Help me now. They ask basketball players to invest in the stock market. Then they manipulate the stock market. You notice how it rises and then all of a sudden when it's tumbling at the end of the day, it comes back. That's because they got a group that's a plunge group. They got together secretly and they said whenever stuff like this happens and we see it's going to collapse this and that, we get together and shore it up to keep you with confidence in that. But how many of you lost your 401k or a major part of it when the stocks went down? Warren Buffett lost a couple of billion dollars. Well, you didn't have that to lose, but how much money did the ball players lose? See, and when they manipulate that stock market, they can make it fall. They can make it rise. You don't want to put your money in that. Oh, you didn't hear me. Am I messing with your stock portfolio? Well, maybe I should before they do. Because I'm going to show you with help of God and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad what we should be doing with our money. Now suppose if Mr. Johnson were here, I would say to Mr. Johnson, Mr. Johnson, why shouldn't we have a meeting with black billionaires and multi-millionaires to talk about what to do to create jobs for our people? Now just listen, just listen. One billion over here, another billion over there is nothing. But when you can pool resources, this is what Jews do, this is what Irish do, this is what Italians do, this is what Mexicans are doing. You laugh at the little Mexican brother, but he's smart, man. Don't laugh at your little Mexican brother. You better look at him good. Do you know, are any union people on the stage? Union people? Thank you, union people. Now listen to this. You know, without the unions, the worker would be crushed in America. Right? Unions have great pension funds. Where my walking mic? Got a walking talk now. We're we getting down to money. Big money. Now look, here's what happened. Unions save the worker, put management in a vice, and by striking, union wages kept getting higher and higher and higher. More benefits, right? But guess what? You struck yourself out because now white folks say we got to bust the unions. But here's the way they're doing it. They go down to Mexico. My brother, I want to come America. We have job for you. Good life for you in America. Buenos dias. Mexican brother comes. Do you think America didn't know he was coming across the border? How the hell can 12 million people just find their way across the border and the government of America don't know what the hell is going on? Talk to me! So now, the undocumented so-called alien 
They don't call that man an alien. When he lived in Texas and you took it from him. He lived in New Mexico, you took it from him. He lived in Arizona, Colorado, parts of Utah, California. You took it from him. So he only coming back home. He's in now. 12 million or more. He's in the factory. He working for less. Are you union? I have to have so many dollars an hour. Otherwise, I ain't working. And the Mexican brother says, I'll take the job. Three or four of them living in a room. You say, look at them people living in a room. Next thing you know, they're pooling their little monies. Because one thing the Mexican brother and sister have, they have unity, they have respect for themselves, and they are united now to build themselves up in America while you laying around like a bum in the country that you built. Now the Mexican, he come out of the apartment and bought a house. Ten of them living in the house. They move down the block, they buy the house next door, the house to that. Then they set up a laundry, then they set up a taco place. Do you want any taco? Meanwhile, back at the factory, the management is saying, Damn, this union is killing me. What are we going to do? We have to strengthen our bottom line. Well, it's cheap labor in Mexico. Set your plant up in Mexico. Set it up in Africa. Set it up in China. Set it up someplace else. Let's get the hell out of America. America made them. Now they leave you in the lurch. And they set up a factory overseas. Now all the manufacturing jobs that functional illiterates could work are gone so how are you going to make a job for the poor unless you bring manufacturing back to America you can't do it and the greedy manufacturers they ain't bringing it back they're too happy but I tell you what we can bring it back Check it out, check it out. Come on, Mr. Johnson. Let's get our black millionaires and billionaires together in a room. We would like to show you how, being a billionaire, you can be double billionaire, triple billionaire. If you invest your money in industry that puts your people to work. Now watch how this works. Isn't America a corporation? Well, if all the billionaires and multimillionaires got together and set up a corporate entity that they own major stock in and offer it to us, to hell with the American banks. Set up your own national black bank and we put our money in our own bank and stop building. Now watch. This is how it's done, man. Now listen. You gotta start with land, not a barbecue pit. Hairdressing salon is nice, a wig place. You know what? It would be nice if we owned some hair place. Because the way you're all buying hair, damn it, we would sure be rich like the Koreans. Oh, man. We black folk like hair. So hell, cut them. Cut it off. Then they got long hair, not over here. Over in India. 
Our hair is so short, sometimes you can't twist it with tweezers. <laughs> oh, Firecon, you need to stop. But that's an industry that the Koreans set up. You want your toes done? You want your nails done? I do, I do your nail for you. I fix good. Do you think they respect you? You paying five, six, seven hundred dollars for hair to put it in a weave and wrap. Some of us paying a thousand dollars. Damn, I mean, you like hair that much? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we need a hundred million acres of land as a start. Now look, the government owes it to us. But maybe they're not going to give it. We got to have another plan. Because you ain't militarily strong enough to take nothing, so... Come on, billionaires. Come on, millionaires. Set up the corporate entity. And let's start buying land. See, it's all for sale. See, your house can burn down, but land... You can have a fire on it, but it's land, baby. Ooh, that land. Now imagine we pool our resources and start even with a million acres. Now, farming. You're getting into agribusiness. Everybody here eats. But what are you eating? Who's producing your food? That's why you got diabetes. That's why you got cancer. That's why you got AIDS. That's why you got high blood pressure. Because you're eating the wrong foods and you're eating foods that have been denatured. We go into agribusiness, brother. Now let me show you something. Come on. Bear with me. I ain't got but a few more minutes. Oh. Yeah, give me. Hold this mic and give me some water. And let me just finish this. Now. See, if our multi-millionaires set up a corporate entity out of which could come a national bank, black bank, oh man, but I don't trust them people. <laughs> I put my money in that bank, maybe them cats will run off with my money. Well, look, man, don't need your money. He's a wise entrepreneur. Brother, don't need uh, that own BET, doesn't need your money to rob you. You got to trust somebody. We can always kill them if they mess up. Don't play with us today now. That's worth killing. Took our money and abscond like Madoff. There won't be a damn jail big enough. We'll kill you in the jail. You got to lose your fear and stand up and pay people back for what they do. So they're not going to do that. They're honorable men. But look at this. 
the government owns 700 million acres of land. 700 million. You know, say, well, look, government, can you sell us 100 million acres? Ain't you tired of us begging you for a job? You know you ain't got no job for us. Why don't you let us make a job for ourselves? Sell us the land. We got the money. We got, we got brother. We got brother Luke Mann. We, we got all these black millionaires and billionaires. We're gonna put our money together, and then the little people. We can sell us stock. Yeah, that's right. That's the trumpet of resurrection, brother and sister. We got to get up and do something for ourselves. Now watch this. I need about ten more minutes. How many of you are Christians? Would you, would you raise your hand? Oh, don't be shamed. Nothing wrong with being a follower of Jesus Christ. Be proud of it. Be proud of it. Stand up for it. Because I follow him too. Well, didn't Jesus feed the multitudes? Hmm. Think about it. Anyway, Look in the genesis of your Bible. Man, God is telling us how to go about this thing. In the genesis, you have Adam, and he has two children, Mr. Cain and Mr. Abel. Now, the Bible says there was no man to till the ground. So God made Adam and Eve produce a son, Cain, who was a tiller of the ground. And Abel was engaged in animal husbandry with sheep. Now look at these two industries coming off the land. Brother and sister, you got to understand what we got to do. It's our genesis now. And it's going to start with land and farming. Land and farming. You are hungry in Philadelphia. The little folk brought non-perishable goods here to give out. Is it the second congressional district? First congressional district. But after they give that out, then what? But look how many vacant lots are in the first congressional district that nothing is going on. Suppose we ask the mayor, the city council, let us have the land. We know how to set up hoop houses and grow food on the land that's better than what you're getting in the supermarket. Freedom means you got to go to work. Sitting around begging somebody else is not the answer. We got to get up and go to work. Now look at this. Do you know how valuable a cow is? The second chapter of the Quran is called Al-Baqarah, 
the cow. Ask yourself, in a book of wisdom, why God, after the opening chapter, is going to name the second chapter, the longest chapter, after a cow. The Quran says, and the cattle, he has created them for you. You have in them warm clothing, other advantages, and of them you eat. And then it says, and surely there is a lesson for you in the cattle. We give you to drink of what is in their bellies from between the feces and the blood pure milk agreeable to the drinkers from a cow and from earth look at the industries that we could create and give jobs to our people look at this did you know here's what you can make from Do you know that from the brain of the cow you get anti-aging creams and medicines? Just from his brain. Use yours. <laughs> from the blood. Oh my Lord. We get dyes and inks, adhesives. We get medicines, we get cake mixes, imitation eggs from the hoofs. We get adhesives, plastics, pet food, plant food, photofilm. All these are industries that just come from having an animal. <clears throat> and look at the way we treat animals. You feed the animal the worst thing you could feed them and then expect something good to come in their milk? See, that's why we need land, brothers. Because if these cows are a gift from God, how do you treat a gift that God, the beneficent God, has given us? We take that cow and we don't feed it hormones. We feed it pure grass. We feed what the cow needs to grow and produce pure milk. Then cheese. Then butter. Damn. Name your butter. Black folk butter. I just threw that out there. Well, they may not want that in the supermarket. That means from your land, you set up warehouses. From your land, you set up your own supermarkets. From your land, you set up your own canning factories. Industry is in your hands. But we got to go to work. Hey. Who's cooking your food? Do you know really how to cook? Did you know that Elijah Muhammad said, your woman is your first nurse, your first teacher? She's really your first doctor. I never knew the inside of a hospital. My mother was from the Caribbean. I got sick, she went to the Bush store. Got a little bush, came home, made some tea. Little Lewis was well again. <laughs> little Lewis never went to the hospital except when I fell down and cut up my hand. Well, she, she had some mud and that kind of technology. She could have fixed that too. Everything we need is right in the earth. 
And if you don't have any earth that you can call your own, you'll always be dependent on what other people produce from what they have. And that's why uniting millions and billions in our billionaires and millionaires and setting up a national black bank, then we can buy all the land that's for sale and the white man will give it to us. He'll sell it to us because he's tired as hell of us. And he's about to kill us. Damn it, I can't do nothing to make these Negroes get up and do something. Every day they're in front of my door with a picket sign. We want jobs. We want jobs. Make better schools. We want jobs. Shut up! And get up! And let's make a job. Make a better school. Whatever you want. It's all there for you. So I close with the words of our president. He said, Go ahead, Go ahead. Negroes, take off your bedroom slippers. Put on your marching shoes. Shake it off. Stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. Stop whining. We're going to press on. We got work to do. Now, I don't know what you meant, Mr. President, but I know what I mean. Go ahead. Go ahead. Take off your bedroom slippers. Damn it, you've been sleeping too long. Get up. And put on your working shoes. Let's shake off dependency. Let's stop complaining. Stop grumbling. Stop crying. Stop whining. And let's go to work and build a future for ourselves. Thank you for listening. And may Allah bless you as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر That means God is the greatest One more time let's put our hands together for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and a perfect message for us in a time of trouble and a period of darkness All praise is due to Allah Brothers and sisters don't rush to the exit doors because this day was made possible by Almighty God Allah and the beauty of the message that we received today came from God through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So can we stop the movement and let's be still and close with prayer? Wherever you are, be still, be still. Let's just be still, if you will, where you are. We're going to close this great 16th anniversary of the Million Man March with prayer. The copy of today's tape is available for you on your way out on DVD and uh, in CD and all of the books that are available and that the minister mentioned in his lecture are available for you. So let us now close with prayer. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, all praise is due to Allah, the Lord of the world, the Beneficent, the Merciful, Master of the Day of Judgment, thee do we serve and thine aid we seek. O Allah, guide us on the right path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not the path of those upon whom your wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. Say he, Allah is one. Allah is he on whom we all depend. 
He begets not, nor is he begotten, and there is none like him. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Ameen. As you leave, brothers and sisters, greet your brother and sister that is next to you. Share love. Let us take this message given to us today, internalize it in our hearts, and even better, let us resolve to act upon the message that God has given to us. Again, the DVD of today's lecture, you don't want to leave without it, is available in the back, right in the rear. All the way uh, in the rear, and also the cards that were in your seats. Brothers and sisters, please make sure that you fill out the information uh, on this card and turn it in on your way out.